Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm on here this morning. Hope everyone had a peaceful night's nice rest. And those that work at night, hope you had peaceful, um, like, good night at work. So I was on here. I'm on here because I was watching this video of this young lady on Facebook. <clears throat> and some of the things that she has gone through, I've gone through. Struggling as a, um, she was single. I was a single married person living in the same house with my husband husband and I was a single married person. And back in um ninety seven he was in a bad car accident, paralyzed him, broke his neck, paralyzed him from his neck down. And the only thing he was able to move was his he was right handed and then he became left handed. So he only had one hand to move. He couldn't walk. He didn't have his balance or anything. He needed total care. He came home with a halo on and me taking care of him and small seven small children and um working at the time was difficult it was becoming difficult so i against what he wanted against what the family wanted i put him in a nursing home um because i couldn't take care of him and work i needed to work to take care of my children um he couldn't work so that was said and that was done and I put him in there. I still went up to visit him and um before the accident we weren't on um a good page. We weren't on a good page. We weren't in a good place because he wanted to be a married single person. I became a married single person because what he, he wanted to be a married single person and hang out with his friends and do everything that he wanted to do and not take care of us and not take care of the family. My children are stair steps. I always had two babies and two children. I had a baby and Pampers and a toddler and Pampers. You know, so back then the Pampers was like, I think it was $20. You get a or night, $20, $10 or $20 or whatever. You could get a nice amount of Pampers for, uh, you know, $20. So I was asking him, you know, um, he was working at the time and I needed Pampers. So he slipped me $20. I said, well, what was, I said, $20, is that all you're going to give me? You know, we have children, they need things, this and the other. He gave me $20. He was like, um, <clears throat> well, some people bet, um, some people are glad to get $20. I said, but. I'm your wife. These are your children. You're supposed to be taking care of us. I'm not a crackhead. Yeah, crackhead would be happy to get the $20, but I'm not. And from that day on, I knew I needed to work. So I worked and worked and worked. And then when I was working, when he was in an accident and I had to continue to work, I had to take off of work because when he came home and me going back and forth to the hospital, I couldn't. I couldn't work and but I did eventually go back to work and that's why he had to go into a nursing home. And um from that on he developed this dislike for me. He didn't like me because I had to put him in a nursing home. And he had his lawyer or paralegal against me and it it's it's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. But I had to struggle. I had to struggle and I had to do things the way I had to do them. And people wanted me to do things the way they wanted me to do them. And my father came to live with me in Chester. And he was the type that, oh, you, you need to do it this way. And I never, they didn't want me to grow up. They wanted me to still be this little Paula. They wanted me to still be little Paula you know, not having a mind of my own. And my dad will always say, oh, you had scarlet fever when you were a baby. So that messed up your mind. I don't know too much about scarlet fever messing up your mind. Um, you know, having a, you have a delayed reaction or delayed being delayed <clears throat> and learning. I don't know too much about that. But that's what he will always say because... I didn't think the way people, you know, thought. My reactions and to doing different things wasn't 
as he said, normal. You know, I did things and thought how I thought, you know, and growing up as a child, my mom died when I was seven. So my grandmother raised us and growing up and all you hear when you're growing up is you're dumb, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're dumb. And it's that being said to a child over and over and over again starts to seep into you. So, you know, in elementary school, when I, and even junior high, junior high school was a little better, but elementary school, I couldn't grasp. I didn't understand. I couldn't get it the way my classmates got it. I didn't pass tests. I didn't pass a lot of tests. I got Fs on tests, you know, or no, it was E's back then. I think it was E's. <laughs> We didn't have, it was E's. It was an E back then, and E was a failing grade. And I couldn't understand. And I, back then, I'm, I don't think they were advanced enough to, you know, test someone to see if they needed to be in a, in a special class or whatever. The classes that they had were for the, um, R, we call them RE classes, back then were for the mentally retarded retarded kids that were in either wheelchairs or walkers or different things like that those were the ones that were in those type classes so me walking and and being able to talk and everything they didn't think it was something wrong i didn't understand until i got grown and had my own children to understand that i had a learning disability I have a learning disability. I am, and I didn't know, but I'm a little dyslexic. I may see, I see things, you know, with dyslexics, this, this, dyslexia, <laughs> dyslexic. You know, when I start saying the words over and over again, it gets mixed up, but y'all know what I'm talking about <laughs> anyway, see? Um, <clears throat> but no, but having a learning disability, I didn't understand and I wouldn't talk to people because I felt as though I was going to say the wrong things. So um, I said all of that to say that I let people tell me not to do this and not to do that. And I took people's word as being Bible, as being yeah, you walk next to God, so I'm sure, you know, God told you to tell me that. So I, that's that's what that's my thought as how as how I took things that people said. You know, I know one time in Chester when they were building the the prison in Chester, I said oh, they were taking applications. I was like, oh wow, I'm gonna go fill an application out, become a correction. I had to correction office. I had the application, everything to be a correction officer. And I took it to church all excited because I said, you know, this is a career. I could take care of my kids. They make good money. I'll be able to pay for things that I need and get a car. I didn't have a car. We all seven children on a bus going back and forth where wherever we need to go. So I had all of this in my mind. I can do this. This is going to be better for me and my family. And I showed it to one of my, um, one of the, um, the leaders at, at my church, and they tell me, oh, you don't want to be a correction officer. That's going to make you hard. You don't want to be a correction officer. You're going to come out being, a, you know, strolling and this, that, and the other, and all hard, and because it makes you tough. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I don't want to come out. Be I'm a tomboy anyway. I don't want to come out you know, being tough and being like a dude or whatever, not knowing that it wouldn't happen like that. So I said, okay, I didn't do that. I said, okay, well, I won't go in there. Maybe I'll try the FBI. You know, I, I didn't really understand, but I always wanted something kind of in um like law enforcement or something, military or something like that. Because, um... I wanted the FBI. Somebody talked me. You don't want to do that. What's going to happen to your children? You got small children. You got this, that, and the other. I never had a good support team to say, well, you know what? You go ahead and do this. I got your kids. 
You go ahead and, and, and develop your, get your career. I got your kids. I didn't, so I didn't go, didn't do the FBI. I wanted to go in the military when, um, before, when I was in high school, I was in ROTC, the Air Force ROTC, and I loved it. The, the, everything about, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go into the Air Force when I get out of high school. <clears throat> Met this guy in high school, a football player in high school, Camden High, <laughs> got pregnant and I didn't go because I, I still wanted to go. I still said I'm going even when I have the baby. I'm still going, but someone said, "Well, once you give, you have to give your daughter up, and once you give your daughter up, her her family's not going to give her back to you." Not knowing that, once I finished everything, I could have come back and got her when I got stable or whatever, um, settled or whatever. I could have came back and got her didn't understand the whole i just listened to some listen to the part that oh they're going to take your daughter and not give her back so i didn't go into the air force i wanted to go in there fly planes i could have probably been a pilot by now everything every big thing decision in my life that i wanted to do someone talked me out of doing it i'm i'm videoing something right now Talk me out of doing, excuse me, talk me out of doing so I never got a chance to do it. And I don't want that to be you. Whatever goals and dreams that you have, go out there and do it. They all, you know, I was told that I was dumb. I, ne I was never going to have anything. I was always going to be on welfare. I don't have business. My Everybody knows your business when you're on welfare. I'm a private person and I didn't want no one to know what I was going through and me getting food stamps and standing in the soup lines and standing in the lines to get food for your kids and, and, um, to get, um, what you call it, to get clothes and things for your children. And I didn't want to do it, but I did it because I didn't know how to take care of, I had to have help to take care of my children. Um, and when I started working, the kids were, oh, you know, getting older. So I would, I would work. I would work. Um, I started working that night when they got older. I started working that night. I had someone to, you know, watch the kids on the day or either they was in, at the babysitter or in school. I would come home, get them. And then I started working that night when they got older. So, um... I started being able to do different things and I still didn't have a car. And I would tell my house, like, you know what? I love trucks. I said, I love that SUV. I love that. He said, oh, you ain't never going to have that. You ain't never going to get that. And I was like, wow. You know, why would you say something like that? You know, if I'm telling you that's what I want, you know, I love that, that truck. And oh, you ain't never going to get that. And it was years and years and years later, I was able to get a truck that I wanted. <clears throat> In 2007, when the, when the Acadia, GMC Acadias first came out, they first came out in 2007, I drove off the lot with a spanking brand new 2007 Acadia, and it was paid in full. I didn't have a new. I didn't have a new. It was paid in full. God blessed me with that. You know, it was so much that I've gone through in my life. I just want, I just wanted to be a little bit of trans, a little bit transparent. You know, every now and then I may, when I get the feeling, I may, you know, tell part of my story. Part of my story. I struggled for so much of my life. I'm still not where I want to be far as the things that I want as far as business and as far as my goals and my dreams. But I know I'm on the path to getting what God has promised me. The other day I was at work and it was raining. I can't remember what day it was. It was raining and raining and raining all day. And then the sun came out. It stopped. The sun came out. And one of the customers said, there's a rainbow. 
I went out there and took a picture. It was beautiful. It was so clear. The sky was so clear. And I thought about God's promise, his promise that he made to us. You know, the covenant that he has made to us. He will not destroy the world uh, by water anymore. So, I mean, it's just God's promise. Just know that the promises of God. Back in Noah's day when he saw that rainbow, God's promise, his covenant. And whatever God has promised us, whatever he has promised you, whatever God has promised you, just know that's going to come to pass. Just hold on to it. Don't let anyone discourage you. If you want to start that business, go on and start that business. If you want to go to work, go to work, whatever the job is or career, whatever it is that you want to do. Don't be like me. Please don't be like me. Letting people discourage you. Letting people talk, tell you that you shouldn't do this, that, and the other. They may, they, they think they have your best interests at heart, but they are deterring you from what your goals and your dreams are. Don't let anybody discourage you. Whatever your dreams are, go out there and get it. I could have been, and I look back over my life and I try not to have re regrets, but I look back and say, you know what? I could have been so much further if I had not listened to certain people. I was told that I was a jealous person. I'm not a jealous person. I will <clears throat> congratulate you, genuinely congratulate you. I'm genuinely happy for you, whatever you are blessed with. I'm genuinely happy for you. I, I support you. I do it all. I was told that I'm a, I was jealous. Um... I'm envious, I'm evil, I was all of these things. And those of you that know me know that I'm none of those things. I'm not a jealous person. And it is it was a hurt piece because it was almost like I was out here in this world with a family, but I was just it was just me and my family, me and my children. You know, I have cousins, uncles and aunts, a sister and a brother, nieces and nephews, but it was I was, it was almost like I was fighting for this, fighting for me and my children. It wasn't the fact of, you know, wanting to do different things because I knew I couldn't afford it. You know, I was told that I was jealous because someone was going on a trip and I knew I couldn't go. I knew I couldn't go. And I was told that I was jealous because that person was going. I wasn't jealous. I couldn't go. I couldn't afford to go. Never thought I was would be able to go on a trip because my children. And uh, someone always said, my godmother always said, they're not always going to be babies. They're not always going to be little children. They're, they're going to grow up. And when they started growing up, it was like, oh, I was able to breathe a little bit more. I was able to breathe a little bit more. I was able to do a little bit more when they started getting older. And um, my best girlfriend for oh, about 25 years, almost 25 years, we had decided to go to Hawaii. That wasn't my first time on a plane, but it was the first time on, on a, that I was kind of nervous. It was that long of a flight. So we went to Hawaii, had a nice time in Hawaii. And someone going, someone said, Oh, they went to Hawaii. Hawaii is a trip for you go to Hawaii when you you go to Hawaii when you go on a honeymoon. Like that's that mentality. That was that their mentality. I'm like, okay, so you mean to tell me everybody that goes on a trip to an island should be going on a trip to an island with their husband or with their wife? girlfriends are not supposed to be going on a trip to an island. Whether it's Hawaii, whether it's Barbados, whether it's Jamaica, you should not be going on a trip to an island with your girlfriends. 
You need to be going on a trip to an island with your husband, with your wife, with your significant other. I was like, what? That's why they ain't never been on an island. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, just, just do what you do, what you do. Don't let anyone discourage you. Um, you know, have fun in your life. Don't just be in a job. You have to take time for yourself. Take time, take time for yourself. Do what you need to do. Please do what, what you would do, what's pleasing to God first and foremost, and take care of yourself. Take care of your life. Take care of your health. Take care of yourself. Don't let anyone discourage you. If you want to go on a trip, take a trip. If you want to buy that car, buy that car. That's not their note. That's not their, their business. That's your business. Whatever you want to do, just do it. I know this video, it was just like I was jumping all over the place um, because I'm just going through different things and different emotions are happening with me. I just lost my um, my ex-father-in-law just died yesterday. So, you know, it's different emotions and he was there. He was there. He was a patriarch of the family and he was good to me and my family children he was really good to us and it's it hurts you know that he's not here anymore and it really hurts because he dropped in my mind and my spirit probably like monday and i said i gotta call him i haven't talked to him i need to call him and see how he's doing and i never got a chance to do it i never got a chance to call him so if someone drops in your spirit, in your heart, call them, pick the phone up, call them, go see them if you're able to. And most and foremost, pray for them, pray for them. This is a loss that's really, really hard because <sighs> we, my children lost their father going on four years ago. They lost, they lost their dad's sister in March, and they lost their grandfather January 2nd. So my children are going through a lot of loss and a lot of hurt. So I ask you all to keep us in prayer and keep my children in prayer. I'm going to end this video. So I hope you got something out of this video because in this video, this video, I was really, really potting around potting around with Paula. I was really just like all over the place. So I hope I said something in this video that would encourage you not to stop re trying to reach your goals and dreams, not to allow anyone to deter you from your God giving gifts, your goals and your dreams, whatever God has put in you. Don't let anyone de just, um, deter you from it. Love you much. Have an awesome day today.